Hello world uh, and welcome to my CS5 final project. It's called Running Pal and it uses OpenAI's uh, API and Strava's API to generate a 30 day running training plan uh, for a race distance of your choice based on your Strava running history. So this is just going to be a quick simple video showing you sort of how it works and just showing like an application of using APIs and especially using OpenAI's GPT-3 uh, because it's an extremely powerful tool and APIs aren't really something that spoke about much within CS50. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of bots using the Twitter API and that's becoming a big thing so um, something like that uh, and you can maybe tie that in with the, the OpenAI's GPT-3 uh, and make some kind of requests using that. It's sort of just, you know, just, just passing on ideas really so uh, of how you can use these different APIs together to make some pretty cool websites. So yeah, here we've got my, uh, this is just the homepage. It's literally taken the finance project. I've changed it, uh, swapped the icon around, changed the title to running pal, remove uh, the headings that we didn't need and just changed the added two headings for the race plan and history. So the race plan is where you just update the, I'll do it now where you update the distance that you're training for so at the minute it's set to a 5k but let's say I want to train for a 10k instead generate training plan when it loads it does take a couple of I saw about five seconds there to make that request um, it's then returned this is the request that it's returned there's a bit of a formatting issue I must say um, so I've tried to get it as you saw when I loaded it up then it returned the days in a list but because it just returns a string, it's often hard for it to be formatted into a list. Let's say uh, GPT returns it in a slightly different format with like a, a different colon or there's a space in a different place, it's not gonna return it as a list. So I've set up like a backup thing. So if it doesn't, if it's not able to format as a list, it will just return it as a, as a message. And this is the, the format which uh, GPT-3 sends you the message as. Uh, as you can see, I've, set up a pop-up so it says race distance updated let's say i don't like that training plan i can just refresh the page it'll make a new request and give me a completely different training plan and as you can see here perfect it's just returning it in the list format it's just a lot clearer uh, and easier on the eyes so yeah that's the race plan uh and this is the yeah race plan tab and then this is the home page and now we'll quickly talk about the history tab so the history tab literally just shows you the last seven days of activities from your Strava. And that information is then used uh, when requesting data, uh, requesting GPT-3 to generate me a training plan. Um, if you don't know, GPT-3 is essentially like chat GPT, but you just build it into, but built into a website. It was released long before ChatGPT and has many, many more users than ChatGPT. So if you've heard about ChatGPT in the news recently as it starts to take popularity, uh, this is where it all started. Uh, and there is believed to be a GPT-4 releasing in the new year, which is meant to be way better than GPT-3. And I'm excited for it because it, as you've probably seen from ChatGPT and stuff, it's a really powerful tool. So yeah, uh, anyway, that's enough of that. There's a weekly mileage total at the bottom, and then that is then used to, to generate the training plan. Um, and yeah, that, that's more or less it. I haven't made this super detailed because you can get all this information from your Strava. No one's gonna use this to as a form of Strava. It's just a, a quick glance to see that all your data has uploaded correctly and, and is there. So yeah, we'll go back onto the homepage again, and it will generate a new training plan once again. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, it, it varies how good the training plan can be, but yeah, most of the time it's a, it's a solid plan. So I'm going to quickly go through the code. I'm not going to show you the top bit of the code because that's got my personal API keys and access tokens, refresh tokens, whatever, and I can't really share, I can't share them with you. Um, but all this part of the code does here is gets all of my activities off Strava uh, and downloads them. And then this part of the code here then goes through all these activities and then finds out which activities took place within the last seven days. It, it compares the, the current time, which is this part here, and then converts it to the same format as which Strava gives you the time of the activity in, and then you can compare the data. Uh, as you can see here, 
if the difference in the time is less than seven days, then return the data and insert it into the table. And that is exactly what this line of code here does. So yes, uh, one thing I do need to do though is delete any activities which are no longer within the seven days. So it'll upload it to SQL, but it's not like a, a, a live feedback loop thing. So I need to get that, that updated so it deletes any activities which are no longer within the recent seven days. But for the sake of this video, I just deleted them manually. This is then the index page and the interesting bit where I make the request from GPT-3. Woo! So yeah, so here, uh, this part is just um, getting the race distance and that, I, I, as you saw, it shows you on the home page the race distance that you're training for so the user knows whether they need to update the race distance or not. This part of the GPT-3 API uh, thing it just shows you which model it uses. So there's different models of open API, uh, open AI's language models um, lesser advanced ones. So if you're making simple requests like generate a random name, you just use the cheapest one. It's not a hard request to make. Whereas this one, as it's a long uh, string with lots of elements like the race distance and it needs to think of all these different things, it's going to be a pretty complicated long request. So that's why I'm using the DaVinci model, the most expensive one per request. Um, the new one that's going to be coming out in 2023, I assume again, will be more advanced, uh, be able to do better things, but it will cost more per request. So it'll cost more to run your website. A good thing about uh, Open, a uh, open AI's uh, API though, is that you can use, just set up a trial account and it's perfect for your, your final project. I think it gives you like a free three month trial and you get $18 credit. And to be honest, you're not gonna use it. I've used, as you see here, $1.64 out of $18. And that's made a couple of hundred requests and pretty complicated ones at that, I'd, I'd say. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna get through the $18 unless you publish the website. So that's the model. And then this is the prompt, create a detailed 30 day uh, training plan for a runner training for a, uh, a race distance. So the distance there in this example, I think it's set what we set to at the minute. Yeah, 10K. So set for a 10 kilometer race with a weekly mileage, uh, where the weekly mileage should total this. And that is the current weekly distance. So I've put it in this format just because it gives me the best, it returns the best data. It's returning me the best training plans. But there's a lot of things that you'd make this request much longer if I were to publish this as a website um, because this is probably not the best way. Well, it wouldn't give you the best training plan. Let's say you want to increase your mileage each week. It doesn't account for that. Or let's say you've got a race this week, uh, one particular week, it doesn't account for that. So there's a lot of variables you could add. And then I've just added a section at the end for it to return the data in this format. And that's how I get it to return the data in the list format. So as it returns a string, I needed something that I could like identify each day with um, to then break it up into the list format. Um, so if it returns the data like this, I can then use this part of the code to then return it as a list. But I've then also got a backup thing here. So it does just return the text message there and that's then sent to index.html. So, and then there's an if function within the HTML page saying if, if the training plan, if it returns, if it can return it as a list, do and return it like this. Else, I don't know why I'm pointing the screen because you can't see me pointing. Else just return the message and that's what you saw. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, what, one other thing to mention, these are all set to standard. You probably don't need to increase the max tokens to be honest, it's set a, a, a sensible level. The temperature is the randomness of the answers that you get. So I've got the temperature at 0.5 just because it's been giving me the best results, but you would expect you want the temperature to be about 0.1 for something like generating training plans for running because it's running something where you do consistently similar activities each week. So you do similar mileage each week. Um, but for some reason, I've just been getting the best results with it at set at, at 0.5. So the lower it is, the less randomness you get. It goes, it's on a scale of zero to one. So yeah, 0.5 is bang in the middle. So that's that for the GPT-3 request. And then finally, 
The only other thing I wanted to show you was, I don't know, which other bit was it? I'm blind. Where? Oh, just the history bit. And all this does is literally just gets the, the data from the SQL table, just like the finance project. So yeah, this is, this is it. Yeah, I'll put all the code in the description. Uh, this has just been a simple video showing you how it works, maybe giving you a bit of inspiration for your CS50 final project. So yeah, any comments, let me know. I'll try and answer them best I can.